Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is my first urban sketch video. Yeah! Okay, first let's pause for a quick intro. This is me. I'm still learning to urban sketch. In fact, I haven't stepped out of the comfort of my own home to draw in public. Do I think people will hover over me, laugh, and stare at what I'm drawing? No, that's not it. I'm just scared. This means when I decide to build up the courage to sit in a cafe, a bar, or a park bench, you'll be right there with me. Um, let me know in the comments if you're just as uneasy as me or how you overcame that type of fear, or if you're just fearless. All right, enough of that. Let's start sketching. Okay, so what I like to do is not really look at the photo or the actual building that you plan on drawing as a whole because it's intimidating. What I've done, what I do looking at this reference photo is I pick sections of it and I break it down into shapes. So I'm going to start from the top to the bottom and the top you can see that there are long rectangular shapes going at an angle and right in the middle. And if you can just look at any building that you're drawing that way, it will be so much easier for you to sketch. Notice that it's just rectangle on top of another rectangle. And it's gonna be like that throughout this whole drawing. When it comes to lettering, I try my best to match the font, um, but it, remember, it's a sketch and don't beat yourself up too hard if you don't get it perfect. And here again, it, you're drawing lines at an angle and you can see that it's just a rectangle. Now, as we are getting into drawing the awning, that shape is a trapezoid, basically a triangle with a flat top. And when we start drawing the design onto the awning, they're just, again, rectangles. So in my most recent drawings, I've been starting to get away from sketching with a pencil and I'm using a really, really fine liner to do the sketch. And then when I paint over it and it dries, then I'll use a thicker liner for the final drawing, which will go through that process in this drawing. But I decided to add um, the initial sketch with a mechanical pencil just so that there is a a little more room for error so that we could erase any mistakes we make. I definitely make mistakes when I ink, but I've just learned to live with them. You know, the more and more you get used to drawing the shapes, it gets easier. The more you get used to understanding that it's just a sketch or getting over it that it's just a sketch, then um, it's kind of easy to let go of the crutch of a pencil and use a pen. As you may have noticed, perspective is not my strong suit. I don't know why I can't grasp it. I've watched so many videos and read so many books and it's just not sticking. If you guys can recommend a great video or book, please leave it in the comments below. Um, that would be super helpful for me. And I know it's just practice. It's just practice like anything else, but it's intimidating that's intimidating and the fear of drawing in public so I got a couple things to get over. So here's the door and again it's just shapes inside of shapes. So as I continue to draw this I'm making mistakes now um, and erasing them and correcting them but when I go over it with um, my fine liner I'll correct it even more. It's not going to be perfect again it's a sketch but the good thing using pencils is that you can erase and fix your mistakes as many times as you want. Is that a good thing? Um, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool to see your past drawings and the mistakes you've made and how far you've come along. Um, but okay, I digress. Back to the drawing. 
So after I finish the pencil sketch, then I will go over it with a 003 fine liner. Then I'll erase the pencil and then add color using watercolor. Oh, and um, one more thing, when you see me go over the pencil sketch with the ink, I am not trying to be too perfect with the lines. I'm probably fixing, you know, um, the perspective here and there, the shapes of the squares or rectangles that I've made if, if they're off a little bit. But as far as like drawing a straight, perfect line, mm, I'm not worried about it too much. Okay, enough of me talking for a little bit. Please continue to draw with me, and when the watercolor dries, I will see you on the other side.
All right, I'm back. And if you made it this far, that's awesome. So what I'm doing right now is I'm using a black Tombow marker for anything black. Um, Just remember when you use a Tombow marker that it should probably be the last thing you use because it is water-based. And if you wet any part of it, it's going to smear all over your painting. Um, I've done that before. So uh, again, yes, I'm using a black Tombow marker and I also use a gray Tombow marker to do shading and you'll see that um, that it's darker under this area and this area. I also use watercolor to do shading, um, but I like to finish it off with the Tombow marker. Okay, that was a totally weird cut in my editing. It doesn't show me switching from a black marker to a gray marker, but right here I'm finishing up the shading using the gray Tombow marker, and I'll be adding additional finishing touches using hatching and stippling. Here I'm writing on the menus with a super, super fine ink pen. I think it's a 003 micron. And for the white on black, I'm using the Uni Posca marker. I was trying to use the like white gel pens and that just didn't pop out very much. The only thing about the Uni Posca, I think that's how you say it, is that they're, the tip is really thick. Um, but I just made little dots on the chalkboard menus. And now I'm adding the stippling and the hashing. The stippling to create texture um, on the walls of the building, the doors, the wood, and the hashing to enhance the shadows that I made with the gray Tombow marker. So as I finish up this drawing, I just want to thank you all to those who've made it to the end let me know how your drawings turned out and um, hopefully I'll see you in the next video I plan on making more of these and just going step by step on how I go through my process um, and if you have any tips and tricks please do leave comments as well especially when it comes to loose sketching watercolor tips and perspective all right, everyone, thanks again for joining me on my first video. I'm sure you could tell I was super nervous. I've never talked to a screen before, other than Zoom meetings, but there was always someone talking back or there was always someone lecturing where I didn't have to talk. Hopefully you learned something and hopefully in my next video, if you draw with me, you'll learn something in that video. Until then, stay positive, stay creative and be kind.